So I got the heat signature gun. Um, I'm in the shed right now, just just walking the aisles to see what I actually have in these boxes. Um, I've taken a little bit of time to calibrate this the heat signature so I can make sense of what I'm seeing. Um, so basically, I'm just going to walk the aisles and show you what I'm seeing here. I'm not seeing too many dead ones, which is good. Um, as you can see in the screen, you can pretty much see the signature of every cluster. So I'm just going to walk the uh, aisles just to uh, just to see if I can count how many dead ones I have. Um, just for an example here, let's say this one right here. That is obviously a small little cluster tucked up in the corner. Probably not very viable, whereas these ones along the way show like a substantial amount of heat given off the center of the body. So I would count those as probably viable. It's kind of neat. And you know, the last couple days I've been getting the impression of these hives being dead because I can't see them. And just because I can't see them doesn't mean there isn't any cluster in there. See, there's a dead one right there. See how that's showing a blank spot. There's no heat signature on that hive at all. Whereas the ones beside it, this one might be a little bit smaller too. So we'll walk up to this next row. And look down it. And the impression I get looking down this aisle is there's a lot of life in those boxes. So these hives, even though I can't see much from the bottom, they've obviously moved up out of sight, but there's substantial uh, there's a substantial heat signature being given off these boxes. And let's look for a dead one here. Okay, this one here is probably dead. As you can see, the heat signature from the hives beside it are quite substantial, and this one is showing a blank spot. Nothing going on inside, so that's, that's, that's two down this row. Let's go down the next row. So this is the row I was walking down the other day, showing all the blank spots in my hives. And as you can see, there are definite, well-defined heat signatures off most of these boxes. So those clusters have definitely moved up out of sight, but these clusters look decent actually. I'm not finding any blank ones. There's one. So that hive there is probably dead. It's actually quite encouraging. I'm glad I got this heat signature gun. Uh, it's kind of putting my mind at ease a little bit. There's one that's probably pretty small. Seeing all these glowing hives is certainly a treat, especially after my fuss yesterday. So we'll just walk down this other side of the row. Uh, as you can see, there's some pretty substantial heat signatures being given off these colonies. I'm not seeing too many blank spots here. This next few rows in here aren't looking as big. They're not glowing as heavily as that lot. Well, they still are. There's a dead one there. So there's a blank spot right there. The clusters around it look decent. This is the row I walked down yesterday or the day before, finding all those empty spots. And obviously, those aren't empty. Walk down there, and I showed these ones here. I couldn't see them from the bottom, but obviously there's masses of bees inside, big enough to give off a heat signature. There's a dead one. And a small one. Walk down this aisle here. Pretty consistent on the heat signatures on these hives. I'm not counting too many dead ones here. 
There's one there. You can pro you can pretty much make out what the hive looks like just by the heat signature giving off the cluster, which is quite encouraging. There's a dead one there. Did one there and there. Did one there. But these guys are looking all right. So there's a dead one here. Oh, just very light, probably a small cluster in there. I'd count that as dead. Go back around the other aisle. It all depends on where that cluster is within that box and how much heat it's going to give off. If the cluster is right against the front, you're definitely going to see a stronger heat signature than if the cluster is further in the center and to the back, both being very, exactly the same size. But you can tell the big ones because they just give off a tremendous amount of heat. There's a dead one here. See that blank spot there? A blank spot there, a blank spot there. I want to show you something that is a flaw with my wintering shed. <clears throat> As I walk closer to the end of the row, you're going to notice more of these hives are showing blank spots. Um, not see how the row is getting cooler here, right at the end. And those hives are alive and they're doing quite well actually when I assess them. Um, but the reason why those hives are showing so much cooler is because. I wonder if we can see it here. My air intake here, see my shaft coming in? And the air flows in through here and then without, I don't have a plenum going down the, the center of, of my shed. All I do is I have the air blowing into the shed against the wall here. Right against the wall and it mixes right over top of these hives. And this is the reason why these hives here are holding a little bit of a tighter cluster because they're cooler. And I've noticed one or two of them are condensing uh, quite badly. Well, these guys are sure still showing a heat signature there. So, I mean, but anyways, that's, that's a flaw of my shed. What I need is an air plenum going from the outlet of that air intake that it goes all the way down the shed and mixes the cold air evenly all the way down instead of just mixing in the one side and being drawn across the shed. Uh, so it's making these hives on on the air intake side a little bit uh, tighter cluster, a little bit cooler, but uh, whatever, it's still working. So just showing down that row, see my fans. I'm seeing a lot of heat signature down there. You know, I think I'm just going to relax a little bit and assess these guys when I get them out. Look at all the heat. Yeah. So that very effectively uh, put my mind at ease. Um, what I think I was seeing there was decent looking uh, heat signatures, which, you know, which probably represents uh, a good sized colony yet, even though they're out of sight, it looks like they've just moved up. Maybe they're a little bit smaller than I'm used to, um, but I didn't see hardly any blank spots throughout. Uh, there'd be small ones, I mean, that's just the business. You get dead ones and small ones, but I was afraid uh, walking the aisles with this um, uh, thermal gun was I was gonna see like no heat signatures or very small heat signatures as I walked the aisles. So I definitely seen what I wanted to see uh, so that puts my mind at ease a little bit. Um, I think the next thing I'm going to do is just stay out of the shed and, you know, quit the fussing and just wait until I can get the bees outside and do proper assessments on them. Um, so we'll just try to keep busy around the honey house here until the weather breaks to the good. So one thing I can rest on, uh, even though the colonies might be a little bit smaller, is uh, with all our queen work we spend a lot of attention towards queen work and you'll notice that this coming up year also um, i like to keep my stock uh, very youthful and we're pretty fussy with our queens if they're failing a little bit as 
as you'll see, I put a lot of attention towards assessments. And if I start seeing a little bit of a failing queen, we, uh, we get another one in there and, and make sure that colony is moving forward at all times. So just to the very fact that we have some good queens uh, in, in my, uh, my hive stock here, and a little bit of smaller cluster, those queens are going to pull through and, uh, and turn those hives into terrific looking beehives. So now I can uh, rest easy a little bit and just be as patient as I can till we get these hives out.